man standing. Finish it. Oh man. Jay. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Clutch, baby. Uh, who is it? Somebody clip that. Who is it? <laughs> who is this guy? What's up my fellow alcoholics and welcome to the channel and in today's video we'll be going over the growl 556 and first of all I want to give a big shout out to my man T Ray and my man Lit Jr. On that opening clip we had a lot of fun playing that 3v3 snipers only gunfight mode and I hope they bring that mode back and partnered up with those guys again because we tore it up for a little while and it was a lot of fun playing with those guys so a big shout out to those two. Uh, they're great people in the community and they help out a lot for YouTube and whatnot and smaller channels. So let's get right into my loadouts for the Growl 556, starting with the Ground War 10v10 loadout. We're going to go with the compensator for the muzzle to help out with the recoil control. The barrel, we're going to run the Nexus barrel for the damage over range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. For the optic, I ran holographics, although you can run other optics, it's personal preference at that point. Uh, for the rear grip, I went with the XRK Void 2 for the ADS time and the sprint to fire speed. And for the under barrel, I went with the Commando foregrip to help out with the recoil stabilization. So that's your side to side wobble or your horizontal recoil. Uh, but definitely a good loadout. When it comes to your long range engagements, I had no problem taking shots on guys that you can probably have a better time sniping. Um, the gun's recoil is very manageable, which is pretty much, it's mostly vertical. So with the uh, Nexus barrel and the compensator on it, it definitely helped out a lot, uh, keeping the gun on target on those super long ranges. And then going to my all-around loadout, uh, we're going to go back with the Nexus barrel for the damage over range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control. The TAC laser for mostly the ADS time, although the aim stability and the aim walking steadiness is definitely a plus. Uh, we're going to go with sleight of hand for the perk to get our reload a lot quicker. And the rear grip, we're going to go for the XRK Void 2 again for the ADS time and the sprint to fire speed. And then the under barrel, we went back to the Commando foregrip for the recoil stabilization. Now this loadout is my go-to loadout. I use this loadout on any and all game modes, any and all maps. You can use it on 6v6, you can use it on shipment, you can use it on uh, Rust, you can use it on any 10v10 uh, maps. It's a well-rounded loadout and I have a ton of fun using it, uh, especially when I uh, kind of want to get a little sweaty. So. And then finally, my little SMG setup, uh, you're going to go with the ZLR Drifter Barrel, which is helping your ADS time, your movement speed, and your recoil control, just because it has its own little built-in foregrip there. Uh, I went with a 1 milliwatt laser for the hipfire accuracy. You can tighten it up a lot more with the 5 milliwatt and also increase your sprint out speed, but do not forget that that laser is visible. For the stock, we went with no stock for the movement speed and the ADS speed. But that does hinder your recoil control a lot, as you'll see in the wall test. Uh, sleight of hand for the reload quickness, just because you're running it as an SMG and you're getting up close and personal. And the XRK Void 2 for the rear grip for the ADS speed and the sprint to fire speed. Now this is a loadout, just kind of like how you would convert the 9mm uh, M4, uh, just to have a little fun with a different type of loadout. I mean, this was... A lot of fun to use for those guys that are using the regular SMGs like on shipment and everything and just kind of like melting them not only at up close but at long range too because you still have that AR capability of hitting uh, with a lot more damage down range but definitely a lot of fun. So going to the wall test here, this is your standard Growl 556. As you can see the recoil pattern is not too bad for something that doesn't have any attachments. So keep that in mind as you start loading up with different attachments. Uh, going to the Ground War 10v10, as you can see the vertical recoil is definitely cut down a lot, so it's a lot more accurate with a lot tighter pattern going vertically, so it definitely helps out a lot. 
uh, for those long range engagements. And then this is my overall loadout for any and all game modes. As you can see, the recoil pattern is up a little higher, uh, but the patterning itself is a lot tighter thanks to that Nexus barrel. So definitely still very, very useful. And then going to the submachine gun conversion, as you can see, the recoil is horrendous, but it is not made for those long range engagements. This is more or less like a uh, shoot house or shipment loadout. <clears throat> it's just it's made for those close range engagements uh, and up close and personal. So, but definitely a lot of fun to use. And uh, as as far as my overall opinion of the Growl 556, to, to tell you guys the truth, it is a wonderful gun to use. It kind of reminds me of using the old school Modern Warfare 2 uh, SCAR, where the SCAR packed a punch. Uh, it was a high caliber, but it had beautiful iron sights and it had uh, a, t uh, a very, very decent fire rate, which made it really really fun to use and really easy to use too um, which brings me to iron sights to the growl the growls iron sights change with any uh, barrel attachment and as you can see here it's more or less like an open sight and it's actually a lot easier to use than the standard sight which has like the ghost ring around it so definitely a really good gun to use um, do I think it's better than the M4 or the the M13? Uh, it'll give them a run for their money, I have to say. The M4 is still pretty much a very competitive weapon. As um, I mean, as most of you tell, if, you, if any of you are following the CDL uh, or the Call of Duty League itself, it's it's the M4 is still the go-to weapon for the pros, for the tournaments, for you know their all their overall competition. You know you see a lot of M4s and MP5s only, it's because those guns are very competitive weapons and they're they're still up there as far as top tier. But uh, the Growl will give the M4 a run for its money, especially at long range, because I have a feeling that it hits a little bit harder than the M4. Uh, but um, as far as the M13 is concerned, I mean, that's the new go-to weapon as far as it getting its recent buff. So uh, I definitely still get melted at close range with an M4 or an M13 when I use the Growl. But, I mean, it's still a very, very good gun, and it's, it is competitive in the right hands. So, but... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully it was a little useful for you guys. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And don't forget the notification bell uh, for future uploads and streams. Uh, next I'll be covering the Striker 45, which is the other weapon in uh, the new season, the season 2. And we'll be going over some attachments for that and some loadouts that I picked that I was very successful with. So enjoy the rest of the gameplay. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll catch you guys next time.
the back.